Fraser River Project is a test and remove program for bighorn sheep that are infected with MOV. MOV is uh, Mycoplasma ovi pneumoniae, and it's a mycoplasma bacteria that's carried only by domestic sheep. Once it's transmitted to wild sheep, it's catastrophic. It causes between 60 to 90 percent of the herd to die, all ages, full curl rams. The big issue, which is what we're dealing with here on the Fraser, is that you have surviving adults that unfortunately continue to pass that bacteria on to the young every year. Typically you see a normal number of lambs in the spring, and then by late summer, once they're weaned off their mother's milk, there's less than 10%. We've moved to a test and remove recovery treatment to try to ultimately bring them back to where they were in the 1990s, which is about three times the population we've got now. So when we arrive on the scene, the biologist has already done two surveys, population surveys, to find out how many ewes are in the subpopulation that we're going to treat that given year. And then we know. So if there's 50, we know we've got to catch 50. That's the challenging, one of the most challenging parts of this project is that we have to catch every animal. A typical capture project, you're targeting maybe five or 10% of a population. Those animals are naive, they're easy to catch. This one, the first day, the first two days, we catch 80% of our targeted sheep. After that, now we're trying to scratch them out from underneath juniper bushes, in the cliffs, in the rocks, in the timber. sheep that we capture gets a nasal swab testing for the movie. We also take blood which can test for exposure to movie. Each one gets a VHF collar. The collar has a temporary rot off so it's only going to stay on the animal for about one year. With that VHF collar it emits a radio signal that we can pick up with the antenna mounted on the front of the helicopter and the receiver that's inside the helicopter. So when we're trying to get those last 20% We'll hone in or find those collars that we've already tested to see if they've met up with some buddies that are untested, uncollared. I think we're starting to get a little bit closer, Chris. It's a 10-year project, so we're hoping we're in year six. We're hoping the next four years we can totally get rid of Movi out of the Fraser River. If the sheep comes back positive as an actively shedding movi animal, then at the end of the project, we euthanize it. That's about the only way. There's no treatment, there's no vaccine for it. There's nothing that we can do. So by removing that animal, sad as it is, you're giving life to all those lambs that are being born in the spring after our test and remove. She, there she is. Yeah, it's pretty classic. Yeah, and it, it behaves exactly like our control. When we and look at the CQs, they're almost the same, 24.67, 23.30, and the shape of that graph is just exactly what we want to see. So definitely one we should remove. Yeah, and she was also positive with Waddle, so she's yeah. had positive in two different labs this year, so. Yeah, she could be our culprit. Oh, it's heartbreaking work. It's very sad, for sure. Um, I know that it's for the greater good. 
You know, I think we've been doing this for about five years and we've already created more lambs than the number of sheep that we've removed. So I can see the big picture, but um, you know, every year it's sad to have to remove sheep. As a wildlife biologist, you know, it's, it's a bit crass, but we always joke around that we, we're good at documenting declines. A project like the Fraser River is incredibly unique and satisfying to be involved in because we're, we're actually, we're making a difference. We're making a tangible difference to these bighorn sheep within a few years of starting this project. And that, that's a rarity. In several bands of sheep, you know, we had basically zero lamb survival for several years prior to doing the test and remove. Some of those bands of sheep, you know, the lamb numbers after treatment are 500% of what they were previous. One of the most amazing thing I think of this project is that it's funded by people that are passionate about wild places and wild sheep. So it's only to people like the, the members of the Wild Sheep Foundation, Wild Sheep Society BC, funding partners like Zitka. Without that, this isn't happening. You know, we're, we're cautiously optimistic. Just knowing how ravaged these sheep have been and seeing them come back, seeing them running in bigger groups on the landscape, it's, it's incredibly satisfying. Today I got a warm, fuzzy feeling because we went out to go catch some lambs in an area that's been previously treated. It was awesome to see. We saw 10 ewes, we saw 10 lambs. It's working, there's no doubt about it.